Hello everybody, by now you're basically a pro at making maps in Dungeon Draft. Now we're going to quickly go over the remaining settings you can change to customize your maps, using an existing image to trace your map, and we'll also cover how to export maps with the right settings for how you'll be using them. As always, there's a link in the description for an article version of this video if you prefer reading or want a quick reference. Let's change over to the settings section of the left hand sidebar and take a look at the first tool, Map Settings. Within this menu, you can change your grid color to something that contrasts with your map more, or drop the opacity of it down if you prefer it to be more subtle. Remember, you can also always turn the grid off by checking that button at the bottom or pressing G. You can also set filters over your map here. Printer Friendly puts it all in black and white so you don't use a ton of ink, and Sepia could make, the, uh, make for some neat in-game handouts. The next section of settings is level settings, but there's so much to do with levels that it got its whole own video with a link in the description, so we're skipping that here. The last option in this section is trace image, which is another really useful feature. If you're trying to replicate a certain layout, like recreating a map from an existing adventure to use in a VTT, you can upload that image here. It will appear as if behind the map, and you can change its scale and opacity. Click the center button to center it on the map, or drag it around until it's where you want it. You can only move the tracing image when you're on this tab of settings, so if you switch over to start laying out buildings and decide it needs to move, just come back here. Then when you're done tracing or want a different image, you can click the round arrow button to clear the image away and marvel at the beautiful map you definitely didn't just plagiarize. Now that you know the basics of making awesome maps in Dungeon Draft, let's see how to actually get them out of the canvas and into your printer or VTT of choice. Clicking the export button up in the top bar gives us the following options. You can export as a PNG, a JPEG with a quality slider, or a universal VTT file. If you're using Foundry or another VTT with support, you can import these directly or with a module, and your walls and lights will already be in place, which is pretty rad. If you want to find out how to do this in Foundry, check out my video on Dungeon Draft Imports linked down below. You can toggle your grid and lighting on and off from here. You can also select a source level and overlay level if your map has multiple levels, and these settings are discussed in depth over in the multi-level map video. Next up are camera filter settings, which we discussed before. You can switch to a printer-friendly version or a sepia tone version of your map here. Below that is a grid preset setting, so you can export to specifically fit different sizes, such as 40 inch and 55 inch TVs. Changing the grid preset will change the grid PPI below, but you can also manually set a grid PPI if needed, like if you're intending to print out your map. Most printers will do best with 300 PPI, but check your printer settings to be sure. For most VTTs, anywhere from 70 to 100 would be a good value. The lower you go, the easier it will be on your friend's systems, but at a slightly lower quality. Once your map is ready to go and your settings are lined up, just hit export and you're all set. Dungeon Draft is a great tool for making custom maps, whether you are printing them or using them on a VTT. I hope this series has been a useful crash course on all the good stuff you can do in Dungeon Draft. If you want to get into using a VTT, I recommend Foundry, and you can check out my Foundry basic series and player's guide, which both have videos and articles linked down below. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.